നമുക്ക് ക്ലാസ്സിനായി സാമങ്കളിനെ വെൽക്കം ചെയ്യാം വെൽക്കം സാമങ്കൾ Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a joy to be back again in your midst and to uh, continue our study. I'm sorry that the, we have some breaks during the class. Uh, I mean, not during the class, but in between the classes because of my travels. And I want to also thank you uh, for praying for me in these uh, journeys that God has been with me and God continues to provide. Please turn with me to Revelation chapter 8 and we will continue our study. Uh, we have been looking at the judgments of God and judgments that are um, uh, planned by God even before the foundations of the earth that are uh, laid on this earth and which as we study God's word, we also understand that even the enemy, the devil knows about it and he is aware that he is a defeated enemy. But he pretends, as he's the father of lies, he pretends uh, that he is the victor and he keeps trying to focus on our lives to defeat us. We've been reading from chapter 8 and we looked at the introduction, the first five verses, which took us uh, to, the, um, to the presence of God. We saw the sixth seal being opened and when there was silence for about half an hour uh, in heaven and we saw... After that, as preparations are made for the next series of judgments. Now, remember again that, uh, just to recap, that the judgments of the Lord are in series of sevens. It is first the seven seals. When the seventh seal is broken, that starts the next series of judgments, which is the seven trumpets. And when the seventh trumpet is blown, it starts the last of the sets of seven judgments which is the vile or bold judgment and which is the most terrible in terms of intensity we saw that it grows from intensity to intensity the uh, and and as these judgments are poured out on the earth the devil his forces and people on this earth are affected by these judgments the judgments typically follow The, would be first against the natural things of this earth, the vegetation, the seas, the rivers, the skies, and then it intensifies against people. The same structure follows with uh, the, uh, the trumpet judgments. We also remember that trumpets in the Jewish uh, system were very important, that the God had... Uh, given them trumpets and they use the trumpets for multiple reasons so uh, in the morning uh, they were woken up by the trumpet sound they marched to the trumpet sounds they stopped their uh, journey on the trumpet sounds uh, on the blowing of the trumpet it was also when they had celebrations or festivals they had the uh, trumpets and trumpets were used even to bring uh, the people uh, and bring attention of the people towards God and the worship at the temple or the tabernacle. So, the, so trumpets are a Jewish uh, symbol. And so we see that being used here in relation to uh, the judgment uh, that is to be passed. Now, we also saw the scene at the throne, at the altar, and how... Um, God is preparing or, uh, for the next series of judgments. It is quite serious. As I mentioned, it is a next level of judgment. And so we see that from the altar, uh, uh, the prayers of the saints are added to a golden censer, uh, which has burning gold from the incense. And then the prayers of the saints, which we again saw, In, uh, in, the pre in chapter 6 is uh, uh, prayers asking God to avenge the death of his saints uh, is filled into, into, the, all the, into the incense. Uh, and then that incense is, in, and that golden censer is thrown towards the earth. Look at verse 5. Then the angel took the censer filled with the fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. He flies from God's presence, carrying that censer of incense from the altar, uh, which is a prayer of saints asking for uh, 
vengeance and he throws it towards the earth if you remember we have seen this uh, altar also in isaiah chapter 6 when isaiah sees the vision of the throne of god he sees the altar do you remember when he sees that vision he falls down aware of his own sin and the sin of his people and he says woe is me for i am undone and i am a man of sin and unclean lips and uh, of, uh, of a people also of unclean lips at that time in verse um, in isaiah chapter 6 we see that an angel picks with a tongs one coal from the altar and comes down and touches the lips of isaiah and says you have been holy you have been sanctified you have been made holy now go and uh, declare the words of the lord that is a reminder to us of how the son of man came down from heaven that live coal and touched each one of our lips each one of our lives and made us holy and made us righteous in his presence that is that uh, depiction that the altar reminds us of god's judgment against sin and the live coal the lord jesus christ himself came and touched us and made us holy in god's presence otherwise there was no way that we could have been holy and so the other thing we also looked at is when he threw this to the earth there were noises there were thunderings there were lightnings and an earthquake so the seventh seal ends with these a uh, few things that are happening keep that in mind because when we come to the seventh trumpet and when we come to the seventh bowl we will see the same there will be thunderings lightning and an earthquake the lord himself said that at the end times you will see earthquakes and so this is a reminder to us also that that is what is to happen and so now it is ready for the next set of judgments verse 6 says then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them so picture in your mind these seven angels standing at the presence of the lord each holding a trumpet and at the appointed time each blows the trumpet now these trumpets judgments go by very quickly and as we read through it we will see that they are going quite quickly let us look into each one of them in verse 7 we read and god see uh, uh, thank you if you could read uh, verse 7 the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up so we see the first angel sounded his trumpet and a third in these judgments we see that god's judgment falls on various aspects of god's creation and it is always a third that is destroyed in this case one third means about 33% uh 33% of the trees were burnt up and all green grass was burnt up just imagine the trees that today we are the with the world and uh, you know all these conservationists are so worried about that uh, the, there is uh, deforestation that is happening they are worried about the fact of the vegetation is declining and so there is less oxygen that is being created carbon dioxide is growing um, there's less opportunity for farming in fact today if you go to certain cities you see uh, that on purpose they are trying to um, bring more trees into the cities bring more green areas and here is god's judgment that falls directly on to what man is trying to preserve today what man sees is very important for man's existence here on the earth that 33% of that is just destroyed it says here the first angel sounded and hail and fire followed mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth just imagine that when god judged sodom and gomorrah those terrible cities cities that had 
done sin to such an extent that God wanted to destroy the city completely, that there too destruction came through fire and brimstone. That brimstone is what we see here, that mingled hail mingled with fire, with blood. So it's like red, it's just terrible. And this falls upon the vegetation. In Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 2, you can note it down. It says, the Lord has a strong and mighty agent as a storm of hail, a tempest of destruction, like a storm of mighty overflowing waters. He has cast it down to the earth with his hand. Judgment has been spoken about. Judgment has been decreed on this earth. And God has foretold that by the prophet saying that there is judgment that is coming if we don't change, if we don't repent, if we don't come into his holy presence. And, <clears throat> and so with that trumpet sound, the first judgment has been put on the earth. If we compare this to the seventh plague, of Egypt in Exodus chapter 9, verse 22 to 26, we see there also that God takes an action against the vegetation. And uh, we see there how this is being uh, destroyed. So as God in Genesis chapter 19, verse 24, rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, this world would have by then reached a point where the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah would be nothing compared to the sins of this period and God judges them and destroys 33% of the earth's vegetation. You can imagine the impact of that. Already the world is strained, if you remember, from the seals. We remember there was war. Uh, do you remember that we talked about the second seal where there was war? We talked about uh, famine. We talked about scarcity that only uh, the command went out saying, save the oil and wine and destroy everything else. So in a world that is already strained by war and by scarcity and by famine, we see now that 33% of the earth's vegetation is destroyed. And so man is now suddenly struck without an opportunity to even probably have his food, uh, when you say 33% of the earth's vegetation, it could be, it, it would definitely include the, the rice bowls of this world, the wheat bowls of this world, uh, the corn and whatever else are staple diets, they all get burnt up. And all green grass has been burnt up. In other words, uh, today the, the uh, animals uh, feed on grass and suddenly they don't have an opportunity to feed on grass. Let's read the next uh, two verses, verse 8 and 9, and we go to the next uh, uh, trumpet, the next judgment. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. So focus is now shifted from the vegetation to the seas. And remember that this again is a judgment that uh, is falling on the natural resources of the world. And so God has judged the vegetation. Now he judges the seas. And a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. Now we today, as with science, we know there are what is called as meteor showers where um, huge bodies that are floating, rocks that are floating uh, in the uh, uh, that are floating between Jupiter and Saturn, and then there are many other celestial uh, bodies, rocks like the comets and others, which are circling around in this universe. And the probability of this coming and hitting the Earth is quite high. We have small meteor showers that we already see. And sometimes we call them as a shooting star. In many times, these shooting stars are nothing but small particles of rock that hit the Earth's atmosphere. As it enters into the atmosphere, because of the friction that is there against it, uh, of the, uh, the air itself, and it's coming at such a high speed, now on entry to the Earth's atmosphere, it starts burning up. And we, we even see that in 
uh, space rockets or uh, the re-entry vehicles that uh, when man makes it, he shields it with heat shield because it takes the whole pressure of that entry and, and it starts burning up around it. To protect the occupants in this vessel, in the space vessel, they put a heat shield around which takes this heat. But when a meteorite enters, it, it goes through this earth and it starts burning up. But here you notice that this meteorite, it says it's like a great mountain, a huge meteorite, a meteorite that can have global impact on the oceans, quite large. Maybe it's miles wide and this comes and falls into the sea. So you can imagine as it hit, as it enters the atmosphere, it starts burning up. So it's uh, red hot. And then when it hits the sea, it first would be steam and vapor that comes out and then probably whatever else material that this rock has would create uh, some sort of damage in the oceans. And if you look here, that so there is heat, there is uh, the external uh, properties of that rock that has come in and the whole splash effect of this falling in has created uh, a catastrophe in the ocean. Now the ocean is disturbed and we see here that a third of the sea became blood. In other words, that sea is now contaminated with some sort of a foreign body, foreign material that is there. And again, so it is 33% of the sea that has turned blood. We read again that 33% of the living creatures in the sea dies immediately. So it could be from the effect of the high heat that is around it. It could be from the effect of these foreign materials that are there. It could be the effect of maybe there was some sort of, of uh, a contamination of the water itself. It could be there is less oxygen in the water because of the heat. Um, we don't know what it is, but God's word tells us that 33% of the oceans are now uh, contaminated. 33% of the fish and the, uh, the sea creatures have died. And 33% of the ships are destroyed. Now, Remember already, vegetation has been destroyed. Man is now suffering from hunger and famine because world, 33% uh, of the world's vegetation is destroyed. In this case, even as 33% of the living creatures are destroyed and also there is um, the ships being destroyed, that man's uh, mo major mode of commercial uh, traffic is destroyed. Do you remember that uh, a couple of years ago, during COVID, um, the Suez Canal, which is a small, uh, in the scope of the world, is a small canal that connects and passes through Egypt and the Red Sea, which helps ships to take goods from the southern part of the sea and take it to the northern part of the world, to Europe and everywhere. And from Europe, ships are able to go through this channel and come to the southern part. One ship got stuck in the Suez Canal for many days. It created a global shortage of goods. We felt the impact of that around the world. Just one Suez Canal, one ship was stuck there. There was global shortage of things. And uh, there was total confusion globally. What we call today as supply chain uh, management was put into disarray as there was this confusion that was created all over the world. We in Kuwait uh, or in India or in the US or in China or in Europe were all affected just because of this one canal which was stopped. And I'm told, and I don't remember the statistics now, but around uh, 300 ships, container ships pass through the Suez Canal uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, but this was the effect. Now, think about it as 33% of world ships. I don't know how many ships are in this world. We are not talking about uh, the passenger boats. We are not talking about ferries. I mean, they are all there. Uh, ferries or big ships like the Titanic or 
these things getting destroyed yes those would have an impact on those families or people but today the world economy runs on container vessels that take goods from one area to the other from china to the rest of the world or from india to the rest of the world or from the us or Aust- uh, europe to the rest of the world or from australia and imagine now 33% of these container ships have been destroyed no cars no electronics no food no vegetables no um, building materials or whatever you can think of it has a direct impact on the economy of the world on the uh, on the world retail market on the world consumer market and so you can imagine suddenly prices would all shoot up if people were having difficulty because of the seals and because even of the first trumpet where vegetation was destroyed now suddenly you don't even have the opportunity to uh, to buy i mean to for goods to reach you because 33% have been destroyed it's a terrible situation it is at this point that we have the next trumpet that blows the th- the third trumpet oh yes uh, before that i have a few statistics here which i would like to share with you on 25th jan 2021 there was this article that came out saying that fish and seafood provides 10 to 12% of the world's population's food needs 3 billion people are dependent on seafood for their sustenance so when you have a third of that of sea creatures being destroyed then 3 billion people are suddenly without the ability to have their own food many of the medicinal products come from the ocean we might not be aware of it today today we might think the ocean is just this one big a piece of water body but on uh, as recent as april 8 2023 this article has come out that ingredients include cancer fighting uh, ingredients arthritis alzheimers heart disease so many so you can imagine that the sea and the impact of this is huge on our our sustenance on commerce and even on medical products and so as we read through these judgments let's understand that god is targeting uh, the devil and his uh, schemes and he is targeting that man should understand that these judgments are for him to acknowledge that there is a god now does he do it we will come to that later the uh, god see was uh, 10 and uh, 11 please and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountain of waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter so we have seen the first trumpet which hit the vegetation we have seen the second trumpet that hits uh, the seas we see now the third trumpet that is directly targeted at fresh water so as i was saying as we read through it let us understand that god is targeting humanity and and judging humanity and uh, to the point that they should repent and come to him or suffer these terrible judgments i've i've uh, when you compare to the egyptian 10 plagues was similar pharaoh's heart, heart was hardened and god sent these judgments to him so that he would Uh, humble himself and yet his heart after each judgment is hardened and we see here that as god judges them a similar uh, event happens and so we hear we see uh, god she just read the third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on the third of the rivers and on the springs of waters so remember what i said that and here we read as a star is another meteor another big meteor and this time uh, it specifically mentions that as it come it's blazing like a torch so it's entered the earth's atmosphere and it's just burning up the the friction that is created between the falling of the star and the air against uh, that uh, that uh, meteor 
causes it to blaze like a torch and it fell from the sky. But this time it doesn't fall in the oceans, but it falls and is targeted towards fresh water. <clears throat> this uh, John names this star or this meteor as wormwood. If you turn to Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 4, it says, but in the end, she's as bitter as wormwood. Wormwood was some sort of uh, 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 material which was bitter and it was unhealthy and it was something that the prophets used to show God's judgment. In Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 19, uh, prophet Jeremiah says that, remember my afflictions and wanderings, the wormwood and the bitterness. So it is something that the prophets considered to be bad. Uh, the word wormwood there itself is more of bitterness. And so it brings that bitterness. Uh, when we drink water, if you take a bottle of water and keep it, like today we had a long drive. We were out in the desert about an hour away and we were uh, the car was parked in the desert. And I had a bottle of water that was in the car. We, I, I have to keep drinking water. I don't know if you noticed, even in my classes, I keep drinking water. And so we got back into the car and I, I needed to drink water. So I took this bottle that was there in the car that, that is fresh mineral water. I took this and I took a sip and I couldn't, you know, even swallow it. The water tasted so bad. Why? Just that it had sat in the car for so long and the heat had caused it to taste bad. Sometimes, I don't know if you have gone to, if, you know, your water at home tastes very sweet, but if you go somewhere else and you taste the water and you say, oh, this water doesn't taste so nice. The minerals in the water give us that feeling of taste. And so here, now we see that this meteor, when it fell, it had some sort of minerals in it, which has made it, made the water bitter. It is not something that can drink. The water is not uh, drinkable anymore. And as we know, that water is very important for, our, uh, for us. Our body, about 75%, I don't know, maybe medically I'm wrong, but I, I, what I understand is about 75% of our body is made of water. If we can't drink water, we can survive without food for some more time, but we cannot survive without, without water. And that water has to be a fresh water. And so here suddenly the water is affected. A third of the waters, notice which water? Fresh water. A third of the rivers and third of the springs of water has become very bitter. In Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 15, it says, I will feed them, this people, with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. Our precious Lord, when he was on the cross, one of, out of the seven utterings that he had, one of those utterings was I thirst. As he was being judged, as that his body was being drained of, his, of the body fluids, he thirsted for water. But did he get water? No. He was given a bitter drink. Terrible drink. And he could not even have it. A water of gall to drink. God's judgment by Jeremiah to even God's people is that God has dictated there will be a time when they will drink of warm water, of warm wood and water of gall to drink. Now, fresh water, when we look at it, two and a half percent of the earth's water is fresh water. That is just enough to survive. This is an article that came on June 16, 2018, when Man studied the water. You know that about, again, 90% uh, or, or, or something, I forgot, not 90 but I think, again, about 70% of the earth or something is filled with water. This planet is special in all the other planets because of its availability of water. But of that, only 2.5% is fresh water. Out of which... Now you think that, oh, two and a half, okay, we can survive. But out of which, 90% of that is frozen water that is in the Antarctic. You know, there was a time that in uh, South Africa, in Cape Town, there was a shortage of water. 
you would have probably read about it. And at that time, South Africa even thought of a project to send a ship out into the Antarctic, cut a big piece of that uh, ice from there and float it and bring it to Cape Town so people would have water. I flew into South Africa, into Cape Town, when Cape Town was going through this water shortage. And you had you were given measured amounts of water that you could use, fresh water, so that for your drinking, uh, to drink water and to, for cooking and even for bathing. So water is very important for us. Fresh water is very important for us. I was recently reading an article that in North America, in the northern part near Michigan, there are, there are a few lakes. And there is one lake which has about 10% of the Earth's fresh water. 10% of the, the 10% that, so the, the whole earth has two and a half percent. Ninety percent is in Antarctica. So if you leave the ninety percent, the balance ten percent, which is only 0.25, out of that ten percent is in North America, in in this lake. So we might think that oh, how will this meteor hell uh, hit all over the fresh water in the world? But fresh water is limited. Africa is struggling because it doesn't have fresh water. Sahara and the deserts and even here where we are in the Middle East, they don't have water. Today, with forestation and with all that's happening, India, even Kerala, doesn't have sufficient water. But here it is, the judgment that comes that one third, 33% of the world uh, fresh water is gone. And people are now thirsty. People are not able to meet their regular needs. Is it over? No, it's not over. The fourth trumpet is going to blow. And so God see verse 12 and 13. Thank you for reading. Okay. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for the third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld. Yeah. And no, that's fine. Yeah, we'll just do uh, 12 first. Notice one thing. The intensity is growing. So vegetation is hit. So the sea is hit. The fresh waters are hit. And now God looks at the celestial bodies. The fourth angel sounded and, and a third of the sun was struck. Sun is not giving light anymore or 33% or of its light is reduced. Uh, and of course, if the sun's light is reduced, the moon's light is reduced. So the moon also 33% is out. The stars are 33% uh, of them are not giving light. And even a third of the day. And now, you know, have you gone out in these days when the whole uh, atmosphere is very gloomy? That is kind of the situation that the, the world is faced with. Man is looking out and it's very gloomy. It pulls down our spirit. It pulls down our, uh, our outlook of the day. Already, I, I'm, uh, I don't have much to eat. Already, the ships are not coming in. Prices have all gone up. Uh, already, there is not enough water to drink. And now the day itself is looking so gloomy. It is, if we are used to clouds covering the sky, you know, and those gloomy days, these are thick clouds and not enough light is coming it is a very gloomy day. The Lord Jesus Christ said there will be signs and the sun and the moon and the stars. The earth is distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. The Lord had spoken about these times that these would be the end times when the, there would be terrible times. The prophet Joel speaks about this time in Joel chapter 2. It says, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day. These four judgments have prepared us for that great day, for prepared man of that time for a day that is coming known as the day of the Lord, a day of judgment. If we think these are bad, what is coming in is even worse than this. As these trumpets are blown, and each of the natural resources of the earth are being reduced by 33 and uh, one third percent. Uh, the, the vegetation, the sea, 
and everything in the sea, the fresh water, and now the celestial bodies. It has prepared for the next set of judgments that is to, uh, that is to come uh, on this earth. And so let us go into a, a little recap of the judgments that we have seen so far and a timeline related to it. So if we look at the earth and uh, we divide it into a post-rapture into the tribulation three and a half years and the great tribulation, which is also three and a half years, I have just lengthened one. Remember, I said last time also just so that I can fit the events that take place here. The second uh, three and a half years is terrible and terrible things are happening and we will look at it. So when the first seal was opened, we remembered that it triggers the start of the tribulation and of a man who comes riding in peace. The second seal was opened and suddenly that peace is taken out from the earth. There is war that follows and that war kind of stays throughout the three and a half years. The third one, if you, when the third seal was opened, we saw scarcity and famine and uh, people don't have enough. It lasts for a certain period of time and it's a natural consequence of war. But now as a judgment, it has become amplified. The, the fourth seal is opened and we saw death and Hades that comes in, uh, riding in and people are dying, it lasts for a certain period of time. And if you remember, one fourth of the population was destroyed, was killed. So if we have 8 billion people, 2 billion people were killed during this judgment that takes place. Did man repent? Man does not repent. And then we have the fifth the seal, which is, uh, meanwhile, believers on this earth are being targeted and are being persecuted and are being martyred and their souls cry out from the altar asking for vengeance asking how long oh lord how long do we wait and they are told wait a little longer because uh, your the number of those who are to be martyred is not yet reached this the sixth uh, the the sixth judgment is where when the seal is opened and if you remember there was a great earthquake and the, the sky was rent into two that you could see even up to the throne of God. And the sun was darkened, the moon was turned into red. Uh, and again, the celestial bodies were, uh, were affected for a short period of time. We don't know how long that is. And then we have the seventh seal, which is silence. Silence for about three and uh, for about half an hour. Following that, we have the first trumpet and that impact. What I'm trying to show you now is the impact. If you follow that yellow line or the orange line, you see the impact of that vegetation. 33% remains for all till the end of the coming, uh, the end of that judgment. The same thing, if you see the impact of the seas, the impact is remains because 33% of the sea is contaminated animals are killed, the, the fish and everything in it is killed, and man does not have those resources. The same thing with the fresh waters. After the trumpet is blown, and these trumpets, we can assume these judgments happens uh, rapidly, one after the other, and so we have uh, people are struggling without fresh water. And if that was bad enough, that the atmosphere itself is now gloomy, light is less, uh, the the sun's brightness is by uh, reduced by thirty three percent, and the moon and the stars and everything else. Such a gloomy time. Notice in this timeline. The reason I put this is these judgments, the the trumpet judgments, remains for the rest from the time they are blown. It remains for the rest of the period till the end of the tribulation period. And then in verse thirteen, we are told, as I watched. I heard and I saw an eagle uh, or an angel, depends on the translation, you have flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are to sound. So if all of this judgment was bad, there is a declaration that has come that the next three judgments are terrible. Woe, woe, 
wo wo is the the, the <coughs> wo is the fifth judgment wo is the sixth judgment and wo is the seventh judgment and the judgment that is going to come is terrible so let us quickly look into chapter 9 and uh, we see the fifth judgment and uh, read with me verse 1 and the fifth angel yep. sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit yeah so here we see the opening of the bottomless pit this star is not a meteor rather it is an angel uh, and to him has been given a key to the bottomless pit we read about this pit in many other places it is known as the abyss Uh, it is uh, a place of darkness it is as the word itself says a bottomless pit which means if you're falling in it you will fall and fall and fall and fall and fall and not reach bottom it is dark and god uses this as a judgment tool like a judgment uh, place a type of prison where he can imprison terrible demons and we will come to a little bit more details on that and so we here we see he was given the key to the shaft of the abyss or to the bottomless pit in verse 2 we read that he opened it when he opened the abyss abyss means again an endless pit smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace look at that artist rendering there of when the trumpet the fifth trumpet is blown and the, and the angel has gone and opened the abyss there is terrible smoke that comes out but it is not just smoke look at verse 3 and out of the smoke locus came upon the earth locus that look terrible again an artist if you see on the screen has drawn a picture of it based on the characteristics that we see here now locus for for man even from his early days is something that is terrible because it's a swarm of locusts millions of locusts that come in and when they come from the desert we don't know how they so many come up suddenly and when they come they eat all the vegetation that is there destroy the land and then move on even very recently about a couple of years ago there was a terrible locust uh, invasion that happened in uh, somewhere in this region in the middle east and already middle east has very few uh, plants and green leaves and they just destroyed everything let me try to play this video so you get to it hasn't played very well the last few times i've tried hopefully it will play now and just to give us an idea of a locust swarm so as you can see it's hundreds of millions of locusts you're able to see it right yeah and it's just we cannot imagine this see look at them they're all individual locusts and they're quite big uh you know, what do you call creatures they're like grasshoppers but bigger and brown in color and it creates drought it creates a terrible situation where it just wipes out all the vegetation man is not able to do anything against this it is a terrible situation that is there so here but we are not talking about these kind of locusts but we are actually talking about and john is trying to explain that out of this bottomless pit when that prison was un unopened like you saw that video of these locusts and you know countless number of locusts there's this whole host of demonic beings that have been released from this abyss and they have just come out and they are given a lot of powers and they are also terrible beings so let's look into some details of that in in verse 3 it says the lock locust came down upon the earth and they were given power like that of scorpions of the earth so notice again that rendering of that uh, image that you see there its tail is like a scorpion it has 
a stinger at the end. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth. So the video we saw were real locusts that were eating the grass of or anything green on this earth. But these locusts are not, they look like locusts, but they're not harming the vegetation. Vegetation, 33% have already been destroyed. So what is their objective? They are told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Targeted. Every unbeliever, every person who has not accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, these locusts have been given the power. And, and, and the, verse, the reason we use locusts is because there are millions of them. And they go around targeting those who have not been sealed by God. Do you remember when we saw the sealing? In chapter 7, that we had seen that sealing. Now we see the purpose of that sealing. It says here that an angel came and told the four angels in chapter 7, hold this. And in verse 2, I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. So those who have been sealed, those who have accepted Christ, those who have not been martyred, living on this earth, only they are not targeted. Everyone else is targeted. Okay, that is in verse 4. In verse 5, we see what they do. Okay, in verse 5, it says, they were not given power to kill them. So these terrible beings, look at that picture. These terrible beings are not being killed by these locusts, by these demons, okay, but to torture them for five months. So remember again that timeline, when this trumpet goes for five months, these people on this earth, unrepentant, worldly, demonic people are tortured for five months. And the agony they suffer will be like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. If any of you have been bitten by a uh, uh, red ant near or the small red ant, you know how painful it is. But here it is like the bite, a repeated bite, sting of the scorpion that goes again and again. Today man tries to escape death. Man tries to find any way in which he can escape death. But in, in verse 6, it says, During those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. For five months, death is removed from this earth. Who has the power over death? God has power over death. And man might try to jump out of a building. He might try to hang himself on a rope. He might even try to shoot himself. But he doesn't die. Death has been removed from this earth so that man would suffer the consequence of his rebellion, would suffer at the hands of the very beings that today he tries to worship. Satanic worship, demon worship, cults, witchcraft, all of that is growing today. Man doesn't want to worship God, but he wants to worship the devil. And for five months, those very devils, the very demons of this, uh, of, who are released from this their pit have come here and they've come to torture them. We, I, I forgot to give you this reference. Turn with me to Jude and we will see the reference to this abyss. Okay? Jude, in Jude, we read about this abyss in verse 6. Uh, the epistle of, by Jude, verse 6. And if you read even the previous verses, it talks about rebellion and it talks about how uh, there is lawless man. In verse 6, it talks about the rebellion that happened in heaven when Lucifer and his angels, those who supported him, which are again 33%, uh, one third of the angelic beings of heaven rebelled with Lucifer against God and most of them have been put into this abyss. The angels which kept not their first estate, 
but left their own habitation, yet reserved in everlasting chains uh, under darkness up to the judgment of the great day. So here we see that they are kept here. But those angels that are mentioned in Jude are not even released at this point in time from the abyss. They are so terrible that they are kept till the judgment day when they will face the judgment of God. So it is this terrible creatures that have come out, demons, de demonic beings that have come out. They are like locusts. They are innumerable. They are evil spirits. And it says that they have a leader called Apollyon. And uh, it says here that they, they are led by uh, this leader who is Apollyon. We read that in verse 13, 11. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, uh, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Apollyon. So they have a leader and he commands them. For five months, they are allowed to torture mankind. But man will try to die but he will not be allowed to die. From verse 7 up to 11, it describes how they look like. They look like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they have something like a crown of gold. Their face resembles human faces. Their hair was like a woman's hair. Their teeth are like a lion's teeth. They are breastplates of iron and so on and so forth and wings and terrible looking creatures. It is these creatures that have come and are in possession of the torture equipment on, on man. For five months, they are being tortured. Verse 12 says, one woe is past. Behold, two more woes are coming after this. One judgment. Out of the three woes that the angel or the eagle cried out, the first is over. Judgment number five is over. We move to judgment number six. The judgment number six is against mankind himself. We read verse 13. Uh, let's see. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Verse 14 also. Thank you. Saying to the sixth angel, which are the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Mm. Here we see the preparation of the as the sixth angel sounds on uh, preparation of uh, 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 judgment that is against man itself. It says here, do you remember four angels that were holding the winds of the earth? Now here we have four angels that have been holding the river Euphrates. The, the river Euphrates is, uh, flows in Iraq. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's a river that divides the east from the west. And so here it's saying, the sixth angel said, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And in verse 15, it says that they were released. These angels have been kept for this hour and this time and, uh, and are specifically reserved for this judgment. And they are released to kill a third of the mankind. So if we go with 8 million the current population of this world, let's do the mathematics. When the um, when the seal judgment was there, when the fourth seal judgment was there, there was death. How many people were uh, killed? Anybody? Do you remember the math? And I kind of re reviewed it earlier. Eight, million, eight billion people on this earth. How many were killed? during the fourth seal. Anybody remembers? So many people. Sorry? Many people. Yeah, but how many? There is a specific number given there. In verse chapter 6 and verse 7, it was 8. This is when the fourth seal was opened. I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades. And Death and Hades uh, was following closely behind them. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine and plague and by wild beasts. These four instruments killed how many? The word says how many? Fourth of the earth. Fourth. Fourth means one-fourth, right? 
One fourth is 25%. So 25% of 8 billion is how many uh, people? One fourth of eight is? This is a maths class now. Let's see how many of you know maths. Two. Yeah. Two billion. That's Two right. Billion. Two billion. Yeah. So out of 8 billion people who are today, it's 8.024 or something, but let's let's round it to 8 billion. 8 billion people after the fourth judgment, uh, the fourth uh, seal was opened, 2 billion have died. How, how have they died? They have died of by sword, which means war, but by, died because of famine, the food is not available, died of plague, which means of illnesses, and of wild beasts on the earth. So now how many people are left on this earth? Six billion. Six billion people are left on this earth. Okay, so this is assuming that the Lord came now and this is what happened. Six billion people are left on the earth. Now, after the sixth trumpet is blown, how many people are killed? 33%. Yeah, 33% mm -hmm. or one third. Mm -hmm. One third of six billion is? Mm -hmm. Two, 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 billion. Billion. two billion. Two billion. So two billion first, two billion later, out of eight billion. So how many people have died? Four, 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 billion. four billion. Four billion. In other words, 50%. By now, by the sixth judgment, by the sixth uh, trumpet judgment, half of those who have who, who were there at the start of the tribulation have died from these two judgments, from the fourth seal judgment and the sixth trumpet judgment. Did you understand this? Do you follow me? Yeah? Yes. Good. So now only 4 billion people, if we go by today's statistics, there are only 4 billion people who have left. So the Lord is just cutting out and creating a, you know, a population balance. Okay. And it's, uh, they are killed. The uh, So how are they killed? A third of mankind was killed by three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails was like snakes having heads with which they inflict injury. So a terrible army comes out to attack and kill about a third of mankind. 33% of mankind, or in today's terminology, 2 billion people are killed by the by these um, soldiers who come. How many are there? How many soldiers are there? Oh. When the river Euphrates is released, there is an army that comes. How many are there? Can you read in your Bible to find out how many are there? You know? Mm -hmm. Killing this 2 billion people? 200,000. 200? 200? Read thousand. it carefully. 200? 200,000,000, 200, which means, yes, 200 million. Yes. So there is this army of 200 million soldiers, or, or uh, I mean, I don't call them soldiers, of 200 horses and riders that came and they killed Two billion people on this earth, a third of the mankind. And they, they, these riders are also terrible. Their breastplates were fury, red, dark, blue, and yellow as sulfur. The head of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. So there is this huge army that comes crossing the river Euphrates, 200 million strong, and they destroy two billion of the earth. Terrible, isn't it? We have come to the close of today's study and it is a, we have come to a terrible situation. The vegetation, one-third of it is destroyed. The sea, one-third is destroyed. The rivers, one-third is destroyed. We have the terrible locust judgment that goes around and has uh, been torturing man without death for five months. And then we have this 200 million uh, strong army that comes and destroys 2 billion people. We would think that with this, even as the world population has been killed by these, we would think that 
man would repent and man would do something. But was there any repentance? In verse 20, we read, the rest of mankind, that means the rest of the four billion odd, that were not killed by these plagues, still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and the idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone and wood. Idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality or their thefts. How terrible it is. God has sent his judgment. By now, how many? Six judgments of the seals and six trumpet judgments. The judgment intensity have, has grown, but the rest who are left are not repentant. Like Pharaoh, they have hardened their hearts and they have refused to bow to this God. And they are Worshipping demons. Isn't that what is happening today also? We read the newspapers. We, we hear of it from our children. Demon worship. Gender identity issues. Uh, attacks against Christianity. All sorts of evil is around us. Even within Christianity. People who take the Bible and walk around. But they do not practice the right faith. They change God's truth into their own. Things of this world and materialism and all of that has become today's idols. Man doesn't want to listen to uh, the salvation by faith or God's word or, or, or humble himself in God's presence. But he would rather focus on self, on materialism, on sexual gratification, see, notice there, and their sexual immorality, and on the things that are that bring pleasure to the eyes and to the ears, and that motivate self. We are under the control of the devil. Let us praise God in the midst of all of what is happening today in preparation for the tribulation time, that God has kept us as a group of his people who are faithful and true and carrying on the work that is assigned to us in reaching souls for the kingdom of God. Even as we thank him, let us prepare ourselves to acknowledge how great and mighty a God he is, a God who has planned all of this, a God who has defeated this enemy, the devil. And let us come together tomorrow to praise and worship him and glorify his name. Thank you. May his name be glorified.